Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're looking at the recently released Spyro Reignited Trilogy, and how it compares to its original 1998 source material, Spyro the Dragon. For the sake of keeping this video simple, we're only looking at the original game, but if you'd like to see follow-up comparisons for Ripto and Year of the Dragon, let me know. And obviously, it's important to keep in mind that it's been 20 years since the original PlayStation version of Spyro the Dragon released, so there's a very slight chance that this new remake could look better. But it's still cool seeing all the great enhancements that the team at Toys for Bob managed to squeeze into this remake, and whether or not it stays true to the original game's art direction and style. So, to start off, let's take a look at our star dragon himself, Spyro. First, you have to give some major credit to Insomniac for managing to pull off what they did all the way back in 1998. The amount of detail in this character model is pretty impressive when considering the other primary character models in the popular 1998 video games like Tomb Raider, Resident Evil, and even Crash Bandicoot. Not only are there some nice textures to show off his armored belly, his scaly body, and rigid horns, but just look at the complexity of the polygons used here. It holds up pretty well today. Though, obviously, our nice new 2018 version looks like it jumps straight out of an animated motion picture, with perfectly rounded edges, textures that react properly to the level's lighting, advanced shadowing, and obviously much smoother animations. We can better make out Spyro's personality and attitude with this new design than ever before. Spyro originally would either look angry or innocent, because those were the only emotions you could really convey back then. But now, we can see Spyro moving his brows, looking around, smirking, and various other advanced animations. This also extends to his little dragonfly sidekick Sparks, who will occasionally fly up to the camera when idle and has a bit of emotion of his own. Another interesting change is the redesigned running animation. Spyro's original standard running animation looked like a sort of half gallop. But the new design is more of a unique skip, giving Spyro a more playful appearance. But Spyro's charge animation appears almost exactly the same, only now with little tufts of smoke and dirt being kicked up as he rams through the environment. Flying is another animation I wanted to take a look at. Previously, Spyro would always wiggle his tail as he flew through the air, which was especially noticeable in the bonus levels where you'd fly around indefinitely. But the new Spyro tones this down, and his tail seems to only react directly to the directional momentum. The little streaks of wind at the tips of his wing are also incorporated differently. Rather than being a streak of multiple small puffs of smoke, the new Spyro has straight streaks instead. But these are all very minor, artistic choices that could really boil down to preference. The biggest difference here comes from looking at the redesigned environments. The overall layout of every level is close to identical, and the overall gameplay experience is just like it was 20 years ago. But the environments now feel fully realized, with better lighting, immensely improved geometry, shadowing, and texture quality. It looks great and reminds me of the excellent work done for the Ratchet & Clank remake a few years ago. The textures in games from 1998 obviously haven't aged well, and have been improved dramatically in the new game, but also aren't complex enough to hurt the original aesthetic. Everything still has the simple, cartoon-like appearance to it, and feels faithful to the original concept. These bushes, for example, now feature leaves, making them appear more three-dimensional, but are still in a spiral formation to help give it that whimsical appearance. Another cool addition is the lush grass added to the ground, which really helps make the image pop more than the simple, flat green textures from 98. The lighting is another part of the graphical design that has seen a great deal of changes. Lighting previously was completely static, with nothing lighting up the environment in any way. Spyro's fire-breathing attack now properly lights up nearby walls and illuminates shadowy areas, which really helps make the fire effects in general feel more believable. There's even some god rays implemented into the lighting design, though each level is still locked to a designated time of day in order to stay consistent with the original design. Shadows in the original 98 game were very rudimentary, with simple ovals under the main character regardless of the sun's position that would fluctuate slightly when Spyro flapped his wings. The new design has a full shadow projection, though it does seem to be a bit too sharp, something that most modern video games today have been stepping away from as they look towards more accurate shadow effects. Special effects have seen some great improvements. Things like explosives and impacts have this great cartoon-like vibe to them in the new game, with colorful puffs of smoke emitting from destroyed objects and nice spark effects. But easily one of the most noticeable changes to the special effects is Spyro's signature fire attack. Like I said before, Spyro's fire attack can light up dark areas in the environment now, but it also can light nearby grass on fire. This doesn't necessarily impact the gameplay in any way, as the effect fades away within a few seconds, but it does still look really cool. Another interesting improvement are the water effects. 
Spyro, at least in the original game, can't swim, and so it's understandable why the water in the original game just looks like a flat, motionless texture. But 2018 Spyro has some nice new water effects that look much better, though I am a bit disappointed to see that the water still doesn't react much, if at all, to Spyro aside from some splash effects. Still, it's miles better than what it used to look like. And finally, let's listen to a few brief sound comparisons. Now, I generally disable the musical score when I do these comparisons, but I feel this is also an important change. The new soundtrack seems to stay incredibly faithful to the original, but also sounds much cleaner and more up to date. But what do you guys think? Do you prefer the original sound design or the newer one? Nasty Nork is a simple creature. Simple. He has been contained in a remote world and is no threat to the Dragon Kingdom. No threat! Besides, he is ugly. That does it. Looks like I've got some things to do. I'll take that question. Nasty Nork is a simple creature. Simple? He has been contained in a remote world and is no threat to the Dragon Kingdom. No threat? Besides, he is ugly. Ugly? That does it! Like I've got some things to do. And that wraps up this episode of Direct Comparison. Spyro Reignited is a beautiful recreation of the original 98 classic, and stays faithful to the original design, while also making some minor improvements to the game's outdated control scheme to help make it less disorienting. Now I'm still playing through all three games and will try and have a full review out soon, but what do you guys think? Did Toys for Bob deliver exactly what you wanted from a Spyro remake? Let me know in the comment section, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this posted every week.